The following training is sponsored by the Niagara Library System. We serve our member libraries in Niagara, Orleans, and Genesee counties. Please visit your local library homepage and use your library card to get access to streaming videos, downloadable music, audiobooks, ebooks, and even more from the comfort of your own home. Thank you. Hello, good to see everybody as usual. Have you ever been surfing on the internet and then you run into something like what is on the screen right now? I went, oh my, that looks good. I'm not a cabbage fan either. Still looks really good to me. And <laughs> it's an Instant Pot recipe or, or pressure cooker or whatever you want to call it. Now, it, as I was looking at this, I'm going, ooh, that looks really good. So I'm scrolling down through the recipe. And of course, there's a lot of information here and there's more and there's other advertisements. And here's the servings and the ingredients and then the instructions. And you're like, oh, okay. And then there's more advertisements down the page. What if I don't want all of that other stuff, but I do want the original recipe, which we're looking at here. And there's a link when you have leftovers, hoo hoo, to the classic Reuben sandwich. What if I wanted both of these recipes to print on a single piece of paper, print in 14 point font, so it's a little bit bigger, and uh, something easy to see, and I, I wrote myself a note here that I should do a video on this, so I can fit everything and uh, I could uh, magnetize it or tack it up on a board and then I can see it later on. Let's talk about how to get this done. We're going to transform this, what we see on the screen, uh, and the second recipe into the top recipe here for the Instant Pot and the Reuben recipe down here. One of the things I am going to be doing in this video is I'm going to be switching from one window to another. So right now we're looking at uh, the internet and that is on your browser. You might use uh, Edge by Microsoft, you might use Chrome by Google, you might use Firefox uh, by Mozilla, uh, Opera, you might use Safari uh, on Apple, although this is going to be a little different. The information I'm going to give you is peculiar to Windows, so we'll keep that in mind. But what I like to do when I'm using two different windows and when I'm switching back and forth is I like to uh, press and hold my thumb on the Alt key on the keyboard, and I'll put that up here, and then tap the Tab key. And then when you Alt Tab, you actually flip between the two open windows that you have, okay? Well, I have the open windows and then the recording windows too, so <laughs> we'll see how this goes. But once I found the recipe, like I said, I went, oh, this looks delicious. I, I must have been really hungry. <laughs> I said, well, this would be wonderful to have again on a single sheet of paper. The first thing I think of is Microsoft Word. Let's go through the steps we would need to do to take this particular recipe and uh, convert it into this and the second recipe as well. Actually, the second recipe might be a second video. We'll see how it goes. First of all, what I'm gonna do is I am going to scroll to the top of the page and I am going to copy, I'm gonna select and then copy the title of the recipe. So in this case, it's right here, Instant Pot Corned Beef Recipe. So I'm gonna place my mouse by the E of Recipe. I'm gonna click and hold my left mouse button and I'm gonna drag it right up to the I of Instant. That makes everything blue. Blue always means that the computer is looking there, it's ready for you to do something, and in this case, we want to copy the information. So while my mouse is right here, I'm wiggling it, hopefully I can highlight that in the blue, what I'm going to do is now right click on the right side of the mouse. That gives me a submenu, and I want to copy the text. That's the first choice. So I'm going to click with the left side, copy. Now that I've copied this, I need a place to put it. So I'm going to open up Microsoft Word. So down at the bottom of my screen, you can't really see it. Uh, there's a little link to open Word. And what I'll do now is go ahead and open up the blank document. So I'll just click once on that. Here we have it. This is a blank document. You can see a, the representation of you know the piece of paper that you're uh, you're looking at and I have my cursor blinking at the top, so I'm actually all set to paste. I have a couple choices when I paste, but what I really like to do is always paste in plain text. So what I'm going to do is bring my mouse 
near to the cursor. So this is my mouse uh, and I'll move it over here so I can highlight that. This is my mouse, it is an I-beam. The cursor is the blinking line. But I'm gonna move my mouse closer to the cursor and I'm going to right click. When I right click, I get a bunch of options, but the one option I want, you can see here it says paste. I can keep the source formatting, which makes it pretty big. I can do what's called merge formatting, which kind of keeps it big, but not too big and it's still bolded. I don't want that. Or I can keep text only. I want the plain text. So that is what I'm going to do consistently is when I paste, choose keep text only. Click it to keep it. Perfect. Now we notice too, the position of our cursor, that little blinking line is always going to be very important. Wherever the cursor is, is where we're going to paste. So now that I have the title of my recipe, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna press my enter key twice to create a space. So there it goes, one, two, and there's my space. Now I have to move back to the window with a recipe. Remember we said, I said I was gonna use alt tab that's what I'm gonna do now. So I'm going to press and hold the Alt key with my thumb and just tap and release both keys at the same time. And that brings me right back to my web browser. Perfect. I'm going to now scroll down. I'm gonna use my wheel on my mouse to scroll down and I'm gonna scroll right down to where it says ingredients. And let me scroll a little more, there we go. So we have ingredients and we have instructions. What I'm going to do is, I, I really don't need the word ingredients. I, I, I don't have it on here because I know these are my ingredients and then I know these are my instructions. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna place my mouse right near where it says one for one large onion, cut into wedges. Okay, I'm going to click and hold my mouse button and I'm going to drag downwards at a 45 degree angle. So I'm gonna keep dragging down and I'm gonna go past instructions and I'm gonna keep going at a 45 degree angle and carefully, this takes a little bit of practice, get to the bottom of the recipe. And it says, you know, garnish with parsley, blah, 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 if desired. Let up your mouse button. Once you have what you need in blue, remember blue means that the computer's paying attention to this, we need to copy it. So again, what I'm going to do is take my mouse and I'm gonna highlight that here in the video where it's in the blue. I'm going to right click and the very first choice is copy. So I click copy. I'm gonna move back to the window with Word. So I'm gonna Alt tab. Remember, wherever we paste is where our cursor is. So it's very important to know where that little blinking line is. I am again going to bring my mouse near to the blinking line. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go immediately to keep text only. And you can see uh, it pops up as kind of a preview on there. You must click the little clipboard that says keep text only. So we'll click that. One of the things is they misspelled, uh, it says extra virgin olive oil. So what I'm going to do is correct that just because that little jagged red line bugs me. I'm going to click in between the I and the G and I'm gonna add in the R that was needed. And that takes the misspelling off. Now remember too, I do not need the word, just like I didn't need the word ingredients at the top, I really don't need the word instructions. But instructions came along with it anyway because that was all part of the recipe, that's fine. Everything is fixable on a computer. That's the great thing about them. So what I'm going to do is for myself, I'm going to click on the line underneath, you can see where my cursor is blinking, underneath the word instructions. And now I'm not gonna press and hold my backspace key because that might, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna just kind of tap the backspace key. So I'm tapping along here. There we go, and that's fine. I like the way that looks. This is pretty good. I'm going to scroll down the piece of paper here in Word to see kind of where I'm at. Oh, and I have a lot of space. Good. Okay. One of the other things I wanted to do was I just wanted to take uh, just the words and uh, make them bigger. Right now we're at 12 point font. So that's 12 point font up here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna click and hold, I'm gonna drag across 
And you see, instead of turning blue like it did on the internet, it turns gray. Gray, that color still means that the computer's looking at it, we've selected it, and the computer's waiting for us to do something with it. In this case, we're not gonna copy it, but we are gonna increase the font size. So I'm gonna go right up to the font size choices. I'm gonna click the little down arrow, and I'm gonna click on 14. Perfect. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna move my mouse here by the one for one large onion. I'm gonna click and hold, drag down at a 45 degree angle to serving, and I'm gonna let up. And actually when I let up, one thing I notice is that this little uh, floating toolbar pops up, and the same, the exact same font size pops up right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the little drop down menu and choose 14 point. Why not? Why should I move my mouse all the way up to the top when I don't have to? All right, good. And last but not least, I'm gonna scroll down using my wheel a bit. I'm going to, again, click and hold. I'm gonna drag at a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna let up. And when I let up, I get my floating toolbar. And we're gonna make that 14 point. So we have, now that I'm, I'm kind of scrolling up and down, I'm looking at, remember, this is the piece of paper. So we, we've, we've kind of, on the, on the real piece of paper, we, we've, we've kind of moved this down pretty far, okay? Uh, because of we increase the size of the font. But we still have room as we look here, so you can see where the edge of the paper is. We still definitely have room for leftovers. So I wanna find that Reuben sandwich recipe that was in the original recipe. It's a link. First thing I'm gonna do before I get too excited about the Reuben sandwich, I am going to make sure that my cursor, which is blinking here at the end of, you know, if desired, is actually in the right spot before I go anywhere else. And right now, it's not in the correct spot because if I try and paste something, it's gonna paste it right there at the end of the, the sentence. That's not the right spot. So I'm going to press my Enter key once, and I'll press it one more time. Now I'm going to Alt-Tab, and I'm gonna go back to the recipe on the internet. And here we are. The recipe for the Reuben sandwich was actually a link inside this original one. So let me scroll up. I'm gonna use my wheel and, whoops, I just passed it. If you happen to have leftovers, ooh, we implore you to make this classic Reuben. And I know this is a link because number one, it's underlined on the page. And number two, when I put my mouse over it, it turns into a hand. So I can click the link. Wow, these look really good. I am not a fan of cabbage or sauerkraut. <laughs> it still looks good to me, I must be hungry. But here is the link to the Reuben sandwich for if you have any leftovers. Again, what I'm gonna do is scroll with my wheel. And, oh wow, okay. So this is nice. Here's, <laughs> here are the ingredients for the sandwich, here's for the dressing, and then here's the directions for uh, the sandwich, and then for you know making the dressing for the sandwich. Hmm, okay, this is gonna be a little more difficult because remember, I am running out of room on the uh, page, and if I need to here, I might split this into the second video, so. <laughs> but let me finish this first, so let's go. All right, so I'm, I'm running out of room on my page, but I wanna make sure that all of this actually still fits on one side so I can print it. I am going to start where I need to start with the recipe, and it really starts with the for the sandwich. Now, if you didn't want the words for the sandwich, you can, you can start where it says eight for the eight slices of rye bread. I'm gonna start with the word for, I'm gonna place my mouse near the word four. It's gonna be a, a little, an eye beam. I'm gonna click and hold and drag at a 45 degree angle downwards. All right, now I'm gonna let up. Now this is, this is the first part of what we want. So this is great. So we're going to move our mouse into the blue area. We're gonna right click and copy. I'm gonna alt tab over to Word. The first thing I'm gonna do now, actually before I uh, paste or do anything else, is I am going to insert, so this little block here, these two, 
This is a, a two by one table or a one by two will look. But right here where our cursor is blinking on the page, you can leave the copy stuff, that, that's fine. I'm going to go right up to the insert tab here on Word, click it. I'm going to click the table and then I am going to click right there on those squares the two by one table. As soon as I click on those squares, my cursor jumps right into the first cell of the table. That's where I want to paste my information. We're going to bring our mouse up near the cursor. We're going to right click. We're going to paste plain text. And there it is for the sandwich, right? I want to finish the directions for the sandwich in this cell. So I am going to, again, make sure that my cursor is in the right spot. I'm going to press my Enter key. And notice my when I press my Enter key, it moves the cell and all of the cells got bigger. And this would be any of the cells in the row that you're working with with the table. Good. Now I'm ready for the directions for the sandwich. So I'm going to Alt-Tab back. And instead of taking the word directions, I'm going to start with the word butter. Butter is always good to start with, isn't it? <laughs> And I'm going to click and hold, drag down at a 45 degree angle, get my blue selection. What are we doing now? We're going to move our mouse into the blue. We're going to right click and we're going to copy. We're going to alt tab back over. We're going to move our mouse near the cursor. We're going to right click and we're going to paste plain text. And here it is. So now the sandwich is there. Good. The next thing we want is the dressing, right? And the dressing, as I've got it here, is actually on the other side. I also, I forgot to put in the title of what this is, but we'll get there. So like I said, the great thing about computers is everything is correctable, it's all fixable. So let's put the dressing here on this side. In order to get to the other side of the table, I'm simply going to take my mouse and click once on that side. And you'll see right there, my mouse, my cursor, my cursor is now blinking at the upper left hand corner of the cell in the table. Perfect. Alt tab for the dressing. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with the four and I'm going to click and hold and drag down at a 45 degree angle, stopping at the word pepper. I'm gonna move my mouse into the blue. I'm gonna right click. I'm going to regular click, copy. Alt-Tab, bring my mouse into the cell where my cursor is, right-click, paste plain text. Remember, once you've done this, and you may make mistakes, that's fine, that's how I learned. When you paste something, the cursor will always be blinking at the end of what you pasted. We don't want to paste or, or, or put things right at the end of the word pepper there. So we need to press our Enter key. That moves our cursor down and that tells Word where to paste the next piece that we want. Alt-Tab again. I'll just go ahead and start the in the medium bowl. So the in, click and hold, drag, turns blue, right click, copy, Alt-Tab, move my mouse, right click, paste as plain text. Now I'm going to scroll down a little bit and see, oh, see, we, we've still got a little bit of room left on our paper. This is good because remember what I said, I forgot to actually um, put the title of what this recipe is. What is most important is the placement of your cursor now. We are done with the internet for the moment. We need to place our cursor. If we want the title of this recipe right on top of the table, we need to bring our mouse up towards the top of the table and actually click one time. When we do that, you see the cursor is blinking on the left-hand side of the screen. Now, so I can see it a little easier, I'm going to scroll up just a, a little. And I can see that my cursor is blinking right in between, so I have no room. I have a little more room on the bottom, so I'm gonna press my Enter key one time. That's gonna move the entire table downwards. And even though I'm not going to center this one, which is fine, I am going to put Reuben Sandwich Instructions. So I have that there. 
Last but not least, let me scroll a little bit, see? Ooh, ooh, we're hitting, all right. So now as we look here, you can see something's actually hitting to a second page. I, I, it's blank, the second page is blank, but I don't want that on a second page. Let's see what we can do here. Let's see. Oh, you know what? Okay, on my first recipe, it has a uh, freshly chopped parsley for serving. I don't really need that line. So I'm going to click by the G of serving and I'm gonna use my backspace key. And again, I'm gonna tap, 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 tap. I'm not, I don't want the backspace key to take out everything. And I keep, okay. And let me take out that line, all right. And I look here too, and at the bottom of the instructions here, it says garnish with parsley and spoon additional cooking liquid over beef, if desired. I don't really need that line either. So what I'm gonna do is click by the period after desired. And again, I'm gonna use my backspace key and I'm gonna clear that stuff out. Once that's done, I'm now gonna scroll down a little bit again. And I see very quickly, I'm back to just one page. That's what I wanted. To finish this off, we would want to, of course, print it. So we're gonna look at the print preview. We click on the word file up here on the left-hand side, and we go right down to the word print. So we'll click on that. And look at that. We have our corned beef hash, or well, corned beef, excuse me, recipe, corned beef and cabbage. And then for your, uh, if you have any leftovers, you can always make Reuben sandwiches. So. I hope you found this interesting. You can use these types of things, uh, these skills for almost anything if you're doing resumes or whatnot. Uh, and this is just, these are great uh, uh, things to know. So I hope you found again that this was interesting and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye now.